Yeah, thank you, Corbin. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. So, yeah, my name is Joe Song. I'm one of the founders of Kidian. Kidian, simplest way to think of it, is, is an app for kids' parties. Actually, not just an app. We're a mobile platform for kids' parties. So it's kind of like a, an open table or an Uber Eats, but just for kids' parties, where parents download the app, they look at different businesses to choose from that host parties, and then they could book something. And it's not just venues, but also entertainers, face painters, um, the whole multi of party services. We're just trying to build a marketplace for parents, because um, we're all parents, and we realize, you know, going through our party planning experience, how, how incredibly stressful it is to do something that should be very simple to do. And that's really where the idea came from. We we're saying, why, man, we, we can really help parents to, to reduce the stress, help them pull off perfect parties, and at the same time help businesses sell capacity. And so that's what we've been doing. We've been doing it for probably three years now. Um, uh, that's when the idea came out. Officially, uh, we raised money back in February. So um, you know, depending on when you want to say the start of the company is, but the idea really was born three years ago. That's great. And I mean, starting a business doesn't just come natural to a lot of folks. So tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so um, I spent 10 years uh, in, in the corporate, corporate world. Uh, I was a director of analytics at Serta Simmons. So uh, at a relatively young age, I was doing pretty well. Um, and then uh, I, you know, I spent a lot of time working um, really closely with C-suites and, and corporate strategy and also in the, as a director of analytics role. Um, I'm, my, in corporate, my, my strengths were really, I was really good at financial modeling and, uh, and putting together um, like kind of consult, internal consulting, kind mm -hmm. of. You know, I go in, just scope out the problem, put together a business case, put together some modeling. Um, and so, you know, I'm very flexible in that area and, and I did well. Um, and when this business idea came, I had to make a decision mm -hmm. to continue, you know, because I, I was having a fast trajectory at, at corporate. Um, but I decided just to give it all up, take a pay cut, and, and now I'm doing this. Wow, that's good. That's a great story, man. It's um, it's tough to make that jump. Uh, for you, what was it like saying, "I'm gonna take a pay cut and just run with this"? So um, yeah, so I, for me, it was actually, it was the actual decision to take the pay cut was, um, wasn't that hard. Because I had already made the mental decision a couple of years before that I was going to do this. Um, it was always a matter of time when it would happen. Actually, um, we can get into this later. I talk about this in some of my presentations, but um, one of the big sacrifices I had to make, not just financially, was uh, my wife and son are in Korea. And they, wow. she, my wife got a great job opportunity. Um, I didn't want to just leave this uh, startup you know, as it was, so we decided to, to live separately uh, while I pursue this and she pursues that. But it's been very tough uh, mentally to get, just to get through that. Um, sometimes, <clears throat> I, sometimes I cry randomly or, or you know, um, but it's just some, one of the sacrifices I have to make. It's something that I try not to dwell over because I can't, mm -hmm. like I get my head right. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you, know, you know, I was, uh, I was director at 32. 35 now, but I was director at 32. Uh, I was making you know, over 150k, um, but you know I still never owned anything. You know, as mm -hmm. in, even as though I was a director, I was I was still never like the head of a business unit or the owner of something. Right. And I always wanted to be um, the head or the lead uh, of something, of some something of my own. And um, you know, from when I came from Tennessee, um, and I've always had these big dreams. Um, and then when I worked in corporate, and you could do, and if you do, you could do well in corporate. I don't want to bash it because a lot of people do very well in there. Um, but I saw, just from my experiences working with C-suite level, and I would hear them just every day talking about money, uh, just like how we, I talk about money. And, and, and it made a big impact on me that I probably need to do something different if I want to get to the level I want to get to. And so I always had that thought in my head, even though I was doing successful, doing pretty well in corporate life, that I, this is not what I, if I want to get to where I want to go, I should, I need to do something different and live a different life. And that's kind of how I kind of rationalize the, the family separation part, yeah. that if I want to uh, have a different outcome in life, maybe I need to take a different path in life. I don't know if it's the right way to rationalize it, but it's the way I've been rationalizing it. It's typically how entrepreneurs